Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's episode 443. I'm uh, Sorgatron at Sorgatron here in Pittsburgh, PA at the Mayhem Studios, ready to talk professionalized wrestling with you guys this week on the podcast streams, on the stream streams, on the YouTube streams, all over the place. With me, of course, uh, back uh, on the lines is uh, Papa Lunchbox from Papa Lunchbox hey Central. Papa Lunchbox is here. Uh, don't be afraid, because uh, I will only touch you in nice ways. Only the nice ways. Only the nice ones. But I'll spit on you like a llama. Oh, my. Oh, my. Whoa. Oh, oh my. Hey. Uh, also with us is the Riz. That's what I like, sir. There he is. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, hi, Sorg. Hi. Hi, we Riz. Video games for we did hours, play video we? games. We did do that. We played uh, Extra Life 24 hours of video games this past weekend for a good cause. If you go to WrestlingMamShow.com, that, that link is still up there. You can still donate. We, we made about uh, 950 of our 1,200 gold, but it's still fantastic for the, the amount of people we had. Uh, mm-hmm. Great effort by everybody. Um, so uh, it's for St. Vincent. Not until the end of the year to get that 12. 12- that's right. St. Vincent's up in Erie, PA, the uh, the birthplace of Bo Diggity. Woo. Yes. Also, uh, returning uh, to this part of the show, at least, he uh, co-hosts with me over on the Indie Mayhem Show. He's the uh, uh, commentator for Inspire Pro Wrestling NWA. It's Eamon, at Eamon to please, on the tweeters. On the tweeters. Yes, indeed. Uh, I, I can validate uh, DJ Lunchbox's uh, uh uh, statements with the fact that I am made of seventy percent llama spit. So, oh, bro. what? I, I won't. I won't, tell. I won't tell you how much percentage came from him, but. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my! Oh, bad touch. Oh my! Uh, so uh, this apparently is the Wrestling Mayhem show, uh, apparently. where you can join us here live uh, for some reason at live.sorgatronmedia.com about nine p.m. Eastern time uh, over there every Tuesday night. Uh, you can also uh, check us out. We're at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can check out this and other shows we're doing. We have uh, uh, not just this uh, on on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. You can also check out the other shows. Uh, uh, the Monday night, or I'm sorry, the the Raw wrap up. Uh, the WWE Raw wrap up, the Midweek War with TNA and NXT Talk, as well as the Wrestling Game Show on iTunes and Stitcher right now. Uh, so you can you can subscribe to them individually, or the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed on Stitcher and Spreaker. No, iTunes and Stitcher. Oh, those are starting to run together now in my head. It's unfortunate. <laughs> um, but you can subscribe to any of those. Please do any, all of them. Uh, comment on them, uh, star them, all that kind of stuff. And you can also drop us a line to that email address. Good times. Good times. Are, you know, very, times. very solo. Holy crap. Uh, so good times oh, at wrestling mayhem sure show. Dot com. Yeah. He's preserving that voice because it's, 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 it's money these days. Uh, yeah, so you you got to pay me the, for the good stuff. Oh, no. Wow. Never work for free. Man, Never work for free. Uh, or 412-206-WMS0. Um, and also, uh, please, uh, no, I said that. I said that. Please check out our buddy, uh, Basic Sickness at basicsickness.com. Some great tunes that uh, brought us in and taken us out here on this podcast as well. Uh, so with that, let's get started. First, Eamon, you were San Antonio. Raw was in San Antonio this week. Raw's going to be wasn't. A- Go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. And you attended it. I and did attend it. You had an experience, a raw experience. How you was your raw experience, sir? Well, my raw experience, this was literally, I, if it helps to, for the listeners to know, I make very spur-of-the-moment decisions in that I bought my ticket three hours before the show started um, and decided, you know what, I'm going to go to Raw night, whatever. Um, 
it was an interesting experience. I think whatever we say about the weekly shows or whatever, you know, you want to, you know, come of it, uh, going to a wrestling show live is always a different experience. And, and I definitely think that, you know, it was, it was a really interesting time. Uh, uh, it was a mixed bag, obviously, for those that watched Raw. Um, but there was some good stuff. There was some interesting stuff, to say the least. Um, but I, overall, it, it was a fun time. It, it, was, a fun, it, was, it was good stuff. Uh, I was disappointed. Uh, Texas, maybe it just shows I go to, but Texas is very weird as far as like, the stuff you get. Like There was a lot of stuff that like I, I was telling people before, uh, before like, um, no Rusev, which kind of disappointed me. Like I, I was, he's kind of one of those guys that I'm really like super invested in, and therefore want to see constantly. Um, so it sucks that he wasn't there. Uh, we only got like a backstage Bray Wyatt promo, which was you know okay, you know because that was the big thing. It was like the, obviously we'll talk about Hell in the Cell, but that was the big you know follow up to that thing. I was like, oh maybe I want to see how they're gonna follow it up, and we just had a promo. And that's okay, I guess. Um, yeah, there was that. Um, there was a lot of stuff that, you know, we they t- told us that we were going to have Dean Ambrose versus Cesaro, and I got super excited, and my, you know, all, all, my, all the feelings were happening, and then we didn't have the match because Dean Ambrose beat him up, and that was it. So, yeah, I, I don't know. So, Overall, it was good. So, 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 I mean, as far as I, is this this is first Raw you've been to in a, or WWE event you've been in a while since uh, uh, kind of taking on your role with Inspire? Um, well, I don't believe so. Actually, yeah, since the last time, I think the last time they had they came was like a little bit before Mania. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I went to a Raw like right a couple weeks before Mania. It was the one where Triple H like announced that he was gonna uh, face Daniel Bryan, and then like. Uh, it, whoever won became the number one contender, or whatever. Um, so no, it, it, it's it's been a, a little while, um, and, and even that raw was kind of, you know, eh, as far as you know the stuff the stuff we got to see. Um, I don't know if it's just San Antonio. I don't know if it's you know bad timing or whatever, but yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's like the new sort of way the shows go. Like it's it's kind of weird. Uh, and it really felt like uh, I think it's I think it's just raw in general. We talked about this a good deal last night on the uh, raw wrap up show about this being the follow up to Hell in a Cell. Uh, Labar had a, Justin Labar had a great article. I think it was on the Trib. Uh, it's either Trib or Wrestle Zone. He writes for well, he wrestle, I mean, he writes for both, but I forget which one this one was on. I think it's the Trib. Um, but uh, about how Hell in a Cell was a very '90s feel to it, and you, the other guys can attest to this, hopefully. Uh, more than Eamon. Uh but I but I think even you saw it like that feel the frantiness with the Hell in a Cell, uh, you know what we saw at the end with Bray Wyatt, as well as uh, uh, you know just you know top to bottom, it felt like the show kind of had an older feel, uh, yeah. action wise, uh, and they really needed. I in his article he talks about they really needed Raw to make it count. Mm-hmm. How and this is across the board, everybody. Uh, one presuming I know Riz and LB, you you were pretty happy with Hell in a Cell, I think, from conversations we've had. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Do you think Raw really kind of followed that up um, with uh, saying us off into towards Survivor Series, kind of hot off the heels of Hell in a Cell, appropriately, or was it just another Raw? It, it was it, just like what Eamon said. It was okay. Yeah. The the the, the, the the role after the Hell in a Cell was okay. Um, honestly, and, and Eamon, I know you're going to disagree with me, but I don't think having Dean Ambrose and uh, Ray Wyatt face-to-face the week after, or the day after that, would be a good thing. Yeah. I think that there needs to be that build-up, that, that emotion, that, that emotional draw to what makes... Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose, which is going to be an amazing match, an amazing match, and having those two like separated from you know one's via satellite or in his in, game, in some know. sort of space, uh, <laughs> and the other one is just crazy about getting to him. That's kind of what we what we what I want in my crazy versus crazy feud. No, I understand that. 
I, I, I will say I one thing I do want to give last night's Raw credit to uh, is that they didn't just give us a bunch of rematches from the pay per view, which they mm. always do. And not only that, but there was a lot of fresh matchups. They're building. Yeah. They're building the Survivor Series. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But like, I I thought it was cool that we got like different matchups than we normally get. Like the, the, having Golden Stardust against Big Show and Mark Henry was fun. Uh, the Usos against Damian Mizdow and, and the Miz was fun. Like, like I, I like that they, they they aren't just giving us like they've been doing for the past couple of weeks, where it's just the same matches each and every week. You know, it's it, they they did some different stuff, which is you know commendable. Yeah, I like that they're building towards um, something new and something different. Some some new interactions. Some, you know, oh, Mark Henry's a bad guy now, and you know we're gonna have uh, uh, Team Cena versus the Authority. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's it's good. It's something different. I'm looking forward to it. Ryback's back. Yeah, Ryback's, Ryback's back. back. I'm back. you know not thrilled, but did that did that come out uh, on on TV as loud as it did in the arena? It, yeah, yeah, it was significant. Ryback was mega over. It was very very significant. Um, and we were excited. Seem, now this is this is for everybody. Does, does it doesn't seem uh, to anybody that they're going to make more than one SummerSlam ma- or Survivor Series match. Does it? Do you think? I think they're just making one. I think. I think that that little skirmish at the end made it like a little bit of hey, there's a lot of shit going down right now in WWE. So and it's like a little build that they're going to go up. To, but I, I I think I'm thinking in more too much into it because I don't it, know about it that. It was Joe people, Cena standing tall in the middle of the ring. The people on the brawl were like Sin Cara and like Los Matadors and like <laughs> exactly. Um, it's the randomness of Survivor Series, but. Uh, Remember, it was Doink the Clown, <laughs> and who was it? Uh, men on a Mission, <laughs> and the Bushwhackers for one freaking time. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I feel like how random is that? Yeah, but I, I, I think with obviously from the way things seem to be going, that John Cena versus Authority Survivor Series match is going to be the main event. It seems. Oh, it is. Not, since yeah, we're not getting so. blockbuster. With that, assumedly that's ten spots. Um, I think they need to have some of their mid card guys like fill out the rest of the card. That's my only worry. So I don't think they would necessarily, you know, have two Survivor Series matches. That's true. Uh, we were we were kind of supposing at like what Team Cena and Team Authority, mostly Team Cena, could be. And I know we were kind of filling it with all the champions, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, because so, well, obviously it seems as if Dolph Ziggler will be one. Yeah, yeah, they, and, and it kind of makes and sense. And that gets rid of an inner kind of. But I mean, maybe it's because like the first people I saw come out were like Star and Gold Dust, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it's like, what do they do for the rest of the show? Uh, is and, anyone and, hoping? Is anyone? Like me, seriously hoping that two of the authority spots are filled by Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury. Kind of, yes. kind of, yeah. And then also we floated the idea: what if Cena, since we're talking about the future, Cena fills it with NXT guys? Mm-hmm. That would be a lot of fun. That could be cool. I found that promo though like super weird on Raw mm-hmm. because basically, I, I, it, it's another one of those cases where Stephanie McMahon and Triple H are my favorite people on the show. Um, but like, they were very much right. And they were also being like, hey, move over. The new generation's coming. Mm-hmm. And that made them the bad guys. Like, that was weird. And it yeah. got Cena with something that he hasn't done in a while. It got the whole crowd behind John Cena for that moment. Mm-hmm. I, I don't most know. Most of the crowd. Mm-hmm. It felt, the crowd it felt like there was a lot of kids there. I, I don't know there, if it's just the shots. San Antonio is very much a we'll do what we tell you. Right. We'll do what you tell us. to do. About. I feel yeah. like San Antonio is a very wrestling is still real kind of place. <laughs> and there, and there were a lot of like Cena sucks people and all that stuff. Uh, you know, so it, it's, you know, but it's, it's not one way or the other, but it's, yeah, I think a lot of people, it, I think area had a lot to do with Cena getting cheered during that. I just found it weird that like, the the big evil argument from Triple H and Stephanie McMahon is your old news. The new generation's coming up. Like that's very weird. Like, <laughs> like why is that a bad thing? Why is that evil? Mm-hmm. And it just felt like uh, I don't know. I, I know they're kind of set the pace going into it, but even like that kind of pointed thing, uh, them sitting and, and and talking to Cena out of nowhere like that. Uh, 
it, it kind of felt like, wait, how did we get to this point? You know, mm-hmm. um, that seemed a little awkward to me. I don't know if I just did. I'm just not. I'm missing the flow of the storyline or something. Um, but still, it was it, it it got someplace, and I'm like, why are we doing this? Why are we doing? Oh, Survivor Series, you know. Yeah, but that's yeah. like the been doing listening too long to wrestling kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, I had that same moment of, oh, that's what's happening right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it seemed like such a like side shift from where we were coming off of a pay per view, and we're just like, oh, 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 we're really doing Survivor Series for reals. Okay, yeah. okay. Sure, we're not bringing Rock or Brock back to do something and forget that Survivor Series is a Survivor Series, uh, yeah. like we've done in years past. And I'm excited at that. Um, and, and to your point of like, hey, a team was like the Bushwhackers and Men on a Mission and Doink the Clown. That's when the entire event was Survivor Series. They didn't even have like it was about four events before they even had a title match on those things. So they were filling the card with eight men a, a, a match. And I think they only yeah. usually booked four to five matches on that show, but but that many people yeah, that can go pretty long. Have like very little story. They, oh they yeah, were booked, they were booked because of spectacle. It was a spectacle event. It's like this is a this is a show where we're having teams. It's like King of the Rings. This is the show where we're having a tournament. This is the show where we have the Royal Rumble, and then your SummerSlam and WrestleManias were the just bigger, bigger feature shows, shows right? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and and I missed that. Just like right now, we have we have a Hell in a Cell because it's the show where we have Hell in a Cell. This is where we have Elimination Chamber. Maybe um, this is where we have no rules because it's it's Extreme Rules, right? Uh, mm-hmm. More or less. You know, this is where all the champions defend. More or less. Uh, you know, it, it, it that's what you look at the Survivor Series as back in the day. Uh, and I really wish they went back to that. Go ahead. Uh, not to jump too far into like Hell in a Cell talk and that. Did anyone get like kind of a? Because I know one of the big things, and I'm sure one of the things that you guys were happy about from the pay per view was that Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins was the main event. D- do you hate that they just reversed it pretty much? Like the opening promo package on Raw was like Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins fought, and then John Cena and Randy Orton had this match for the number one contendership. And like, I well, think I think that's picking. To be honest, I don't think it's that big a deal. Because I, uh, I don't know if any, that's happening. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, fa- ahead, finish up Bayman and then we'll go to Riz. I was just going to say, because I don't know if anyone re- happened to read the uh, best and worst of Hell in the Cell from Brandon Stroud, but he mentioned how like John Cena and Randy Orton were, were the mid-card like, Hell in the Cell match, but they were fighting like it was the main event. Like mm-hmm. they, were doing, they were having like a match you would have in the main event, and the Dean Ambrose Seth Rollins match was kind of a match you would have in the middle of the card. Uh, go, go ahead, Riz, and I have some thoughts on that. I, I just think it's because... It, the the stakes were higher in one match, mm-hmm. in the John Cena and Randy Orton match, that they had to make it bigger than it already is. Because it's John Cena won, John Cena gets the number one contenders match, and John Cena faces Brock Lesnar whenever Brock Lesnar comes back. So mm-hmm. I think that's their reasoning for having that little switcheroo on there. And uh, like you said, it did seem like it was a main event match in the mid card and a mid card match in the main event, which the mid mid, which have the mid card stole the show mm-hmm. until the very end, which some people are very angry about for some reason. Uh, but mm-hmm. I just think, I just think that it's just to the point where it's just because it's the main, it, it's the main title over the main event. Yeah. Sorry, you had, you had a point to say. Um. Yeah, forget, forgive me if I overlap. <laughs> I was checking on something, Riz. Uh, for me, it just felt like as you should. Now, now, previously in Hell in a Cell, I feel like we've had. Well, this is obviously the main event, even though this is also a title match, like the world title or something. Like you always knew that because you'd have two Hell in a Cell matches. Say both. Both are the title matches, the world and WWE, right? Yeah. And I always felt like that one in the mid card was always the one that was going to have the screw you finish. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like, like that positioning mattered for that, and it felt like the opposite for this one. But, but what should happen, and I think what did happen at Hell in a Cell is, hey, both of our Hell in a Cell matches, regardless of where they are in the card, should feel like a main event. When you Absolutely. go to WrestleMania, you have like five main events on a good year. You have. Mm-hmm. 
ta- whatever Taker is doing. You got Rock and Cena. You've got um, maybe Triple H is fighting somebody outside of oh well, Triple H. Mm-hmm. Well, one year, tr- the year I went, tr- Triple H and Brock, Taker and and Punk, and the main event. You could cap any pay per view. With, with those that, three with matches, matches. Yeah, 30 yeah. was the same way. It started with a damn main event, guys. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I think... I think and, 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 go ahead. I was gonna say, thank, and thank God for this year's Hell in the Cell for them actually making matches that kind of meant something. Yes. And, weren't, and, and had a purpose and that weren't just, this, these are the title matches, these are the title match feuds, let's put them in a, let's put them in a cell. Awesome. Uh, so we'll push. Uh, hey, I want to push a little bit of the Hell in a Cell talk, mostly for later. I got a couple other little tidbits we'll touch on here. But first, I want to give a shout out to friends on SliceOnBroadway.com. They're right up the hill, or right? Yeah, up the hill and down the way over here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. They're providing pizza here for our stu- in studio guests to join us throughout the night here in uh, Mayhem mayhem studios in pittsburgh pa through the podcast you know we do more than the wrestling podcast we do we, we start we start podcasting we, we start broadcasting about 3 30 4 o'clock and we got everything geeky um i think uh, will L- lb whoever you are whoever you are um um you I'm said, whoever you want me to be i, I think you're the <laughs> one that coined that like everything we do here is an obsession right yes and and that and for us that's video games that's 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 technology, that's movies, that's a little bit of your health, which, you know, frankly, anybody should be obsessed for their health. And, yeah, uh, guys. <laughs> guys, 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 some there. of us, you know, drinking coffee and playing video games for 24 hours this weekend <laughs> for a good cause. Uh, but Slice on Broadway provides us uh, so because we would always, you know, bring a piece of anybody that, that's fortunate enough to come into the studio. Fortunate for us that they came into the studio. I'm not saying that, whatever. Um, but they've been helping us. SlayUsOnBroadway.com. It is a hallowed shrine that only very chosen few may pass. Exactly. Exactly. You can sit right next to the water heater. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You've been here. You know what it's like. Um, do your laundry while we podcast. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Slice on Broadway. <laughs> Check it out, SliceOnBroadway.com. Um, somebody pick a story because I'm dying over here. Apparently, uh, LB, uh, uh, Eamon? I don't. I don't know. Did you want to go? In that? Is this what we're going to Hell in the Cell? I don't know how the show works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm alive. I'm alive. He's good. Um, awake. I'm hoping one of you guys check this out. Um, I actually found this video mid podcast tonight <laughs> through the through the evening. Um, it's a 10 minute, sh- it's a 10 minute, uh, uh, video actually on YouTube. Um, and I noticed a friend of IWC, uh, uh asylum, uh, really awesome guy. He's been a lot of the oh, IWC. I um, I got nothing but good things to say about this guy. You may know him as the, uh, Eamon help me out the doctor. He was Paul Eamon's doctor during his feud with punk. I want to say, yeah, I, I think of that with punk I and everything. That. Um, but he he was featured in a open tryout they had for the uh, WWE Performance Center in actually September. Uh, so he he's a part of that. Um, I, I also uh, I believe uh, Rich Swan was a part of that as oh, well. Awesome! Uh, I awesome. Think, uh, I don't. I think there may be another so indie name. But I don't, here's I a little. I don't. Here's a little bit of the video. So they were they pretty much put together this uh, looks like a promotion. But again, I haven't had a chance to listen to the audio of this. But uh, you know, just kind of checking out some of the visuals from it. Um, mm-hmm. But it was like I. It, were, were they I forget I said at the beginning I, I, I can't I don't remember if they were invited or if it was an open call or what I, I know like we said asylum he he was actually involved you know in as an extra in a storyline uh so he's obviously on their radar already and, and you look he at also, that, also one of the guys in there was uh Ryan Howe who was on that uh, the latest season of uh, tough enough okay yeah 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 I remember that I, I saw the clip on there where they were talking to him afterwards so um that that's it's really cool and you see them kind of putting people through their paces uh physically doing some of the, the workouts and stuff like you always hear about i love the dr mm-hmm. swag t-shirt with the cat in the hat this guy was just wearing yeah um, but but it, it's cool because i think this is i mean assumingly like this is the process that guys like kenta or prince devitt or kevin steen well i think you know, i i feel like through. guys like that didn't go through this process like even uh, though well, they had uh, Kevin Steen assumingly had a tryout at some point, mm-hmm. uh, and like it, uh, he had a tryout with a couple other Ring of Honor guys as well. Um, and assumably, like if this is their tryout method, if, if this is their way to sort of you know 
test the guys and see if they're you know qualified for you know whatever you know uh i would assume this is the way to do i don't know if indie talents or big name independent talents get a certain you know you know get viewed a certain different way as say like the, the former football players or or you know athletes or whatever but um, I, I, I mean, assumingly, if this is what they're portraying, like I, I would think that this is what they traditionally use to judge these talents. I love it. So apparently, it's several day. I just got to like the day two, and they call it the meat grinder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that, this looks like when they're they're actually taking bumps or running ropes and stuff, which is a painful process for mm-hmm. anybody if you're not used to, if you're not already callous to it. You know, and ideally, I, I, I'd imagine um, this is for people that are certainly already wrestlers. Right. Like, I don't think this is a a, from the looks of the way they do this, because they're at least the samples they're showing here, like people are are doing the somersault bumps. uh, You know, they're doing some pretty serious stuff. I don't think you would have a newbie do day day one necessarily. Maybe. I I mean, I from what I could tell, like, they do have like headgear and stuff like that. So possibly like I I think like I think they, they would do everything to protect to make sure that, hey. Like here's like I'm sure they showed them like hey here's the basic thing to do like can you do it and can you like showcase that you have enough ability in you to where we can teach you even further mm-hmm. you know so I mean it, it's kind of cool to see uh, kind of behind the curtain here we don't, haven't had a tough enough for a while they they showed a clip from tough enough with the the, the one guy you mentioned Levine I, I think it was um, or uh, uh, Ryan Howe oh uh, Howe yeah. Levine <laughs> Levine was the one that got it and then like oh yeah yeah, was, yeah 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 yeah. Uh, so, quiet, 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 and this is, free. and even if like you know, uh, uh, you know, from from stuff I've I've heard about the process from people that have been through it uh, that we've spoken to, uh, maybe you have uh, as well down there. Um, mm-hmm. I, I know we're getting a little indie mayhem territory here, but it, it applies because this is the process. This is, we've been talking about NXT all the time on the show, and this is how they get there. This is like the pre NXT, really. Yeah. Um, but. Even it seems like everybody I've heard of that's gone to a trial, even if they don't get signed up right away, um, that kind of leaves the door open for one. They get a lot of advice. Um, I, I know uh, I've heard like Jr. you know, comments saying, you know, like, oh, you're good. You know, do this, work on your build, look at work on that, you know, and uh, come back to us in six months and we'll see how you're doing or something. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So a lot of guys are getting look, a lot of guys are getting advice. Hopefully they're taking whether you like it or not, and I've heard people also complain about their tryouts in front of certain people in WWE too. Um, and mm-hmm. a lot of it is, um, you know, are you, even though you don't agree with it, you know, this is what they're looking for to get there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you kind of, you kind of, you kind of got to go ahead. What's that? Uh, just in case of like, not just anyone can do it. Like it's not just exactly. something where you, you can wrestle and, and be a wrestler and that's fine. Like, no, mm-hmm. they're, they're, I think they're running people through the ringer because one, the schedule is very tough. And, that's the and thing. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's very different than, you know, just wrestling on indie shows. Some of the best wrestlers in the world maybe can't do an indie, uh, or I'm sorry, a WWE kind of, uh, mm-hmm. the, the kind of schedule. I mean, you think of how many times have to, how many things have to go into being a WWE person. Like you have to be so good in the ring. You have to be able to do it their way in the ring. Mm-hmm. Um, be able to present yourself, be a character, be able to travel and not do stupid stuff, which is really, yeah. really hard for some people. So, um, but no, it's really cool. And I, I really cool that they're kind of opening that. And, and hopefully this means that there's a tough enough coming soon, <laughs> or, or maybe this is the thing they did because they couldn't do tough enough. Cause it felt like, uh, I, I, what is the story is like, they're supposed to have started tough enough by now. And I'm wondering if this is like the tryout was already scheduled and happening. They just then they decided not to do tough enough. Like maybe they were being told, hey, this is a thing for tough enough and we'll see how you guys do. And they just turned it into what you see here. So mm. it's interesting. So uh, yeah. get, uh, what's that? No, yeah, definitely. I, I, no, think, I, think, I think it's very intriguing as far as, you know, that's what I've asked me. If not tough enough, I would love to um, just do more of these like closer looks at like, how, how development happens and and how and how things go in that department. Mm-hmm. Awesome, Riz. Is somebody following you on Twitter? Riz is muted. Is Riz. somebody following me on Twitter? Oh, didn't you have a comment about some about wrestlers following you on Twitter? Wait, what am I doing? On the Facebook. Oh yeah, uh, this happened like a while ago. Yeah, this happened a while ago, and I, I posted the question 
to the show on Facebook. Uh, but Titus O'Neil is me on Twitter. <laughs> Like, it's not it's not like I said anything to him. It's not like I uh, agreed with him and then he just followed me. He just randomly followed me. Huh. You haven't, like, nice. tagged him or anything? Like, talking about anything? This, this, no, this happened, like, when he first started. Hmm. Hmm. I, I, one of the first, like, times I've seen him. And all of a sudden, he follows me. And I'm just, like, sitting there and I'm wondering why he's following me. I should not talk bad about Titus. Yeah, he ties in as a nice person. Yeah, that's what's happening. He seems NXT like he is. He is, he is a good person. Yeah, he seems like he'd be real nice, real cuddly, you know. <laughs> By the way, Titus, if you're listening, buddy, uh, follow the Man Show. At Man Show. I'm actually, I'm actually looking to see if he does. Okay, so. interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I don't know if I have any wrestlers that follow me. I always like big name wrestlers. Yeah, I mean, like, no, that was my question. People, I mean, like not people I work with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like but WWE actually, wrestlers. Yeah, like actual wrestlers. Amen. Like I can't think of any. Yeah, I I, I don't know. My buddy Seamus does it. I know that. No, oh, yeah. Well, you got tweeted by Seamus. So. What's that? Uh, we'll, we'll get, we'll I get did. The, we'll get Seamus in a little bit, Sorg. We'll get the. Oh, we'll get the, really? <laughs> wait, what? I didn't know. No, we will. Sort of. I didn't know. I didn't know that was a thing that we were going to do. Okay. Anyways. Okay. <laughs> I should be All right. angry with him, Sorg. Why? We'll get into that later. Okay, we'll get into it later. <laughs> I don't... Wait, wait. Who wrote the thing? I, I don't. The delayed, I don't the delayed pause is amazing. I, I don't. I don't get what's going on. Okay. Uh, on that note, uh, we'll get to a couple of things here. Uh, we'll, uh, here in a half, and cool. And remember when. Uh, so, uh, in the meantime, Hey, please check out podcamppittsburgh.com If you're in the Pittsburgh area, uh, coming up on November 22nd through 23rd, if you want to travel here, if you're not too far away, but that's okay because Sorgatron media will provide the live streaming much like we do every, here every Tuesday night. We'll be uh, live streaming four rooms all weekend long. Uh, if from about, I don't know, something like nine, nine o'clock to two or three o'clock every day, um, including a meet and greet, meet and greet up at I- Ikea. That's going to be fun. Uh, they usually <laughs> do a Saturday night party Did as well. Ikea? Ikea. Yes. The meet and greet Friday night will be at Ikea and Robinson. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's a lot of fun. We This is the ninth year we've been doing it. With the Wrestling Man Show in particular has been involved since day one with PodCamp Pittsburgh out at the old filmmakers. That's how we met our good friends. Should I drink that? That's how we met most of our friends. That's sword. how we Let's met most honest. of the people we do anything with now that isn't in Texas. 90% of the people we know in Pittsburgh is because of uh, a pod camp. Yes. So go. Make which, friends. Which or, is not a complaint or bad thing at all. It's, a, it's an insane thing that happens. It opens your 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 mind a little bit. Uh, but no, great classes and sessions uh, about social media, about you know the Twitters, the Facebooks, about podcasting. We'll be there talking about podcasting. Uh, in some shape or form from Sorgatron Media. Uh, so go check that out, podcamppittsburgh.com. And also please check out, well, there's Riz for no reason. Uh, also please check out our store at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Um, some gr- some great stuff uh, going on there, including re- the recently released Retro Reunion available on digital download uh, for $9.99. Uh, and the VOW uh, Pro- nah, 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 nah. Prime nah, nah, Wrestling nah, 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 nah. with M Dog Matt Cross. Who's been? Uh, I understand he might be debuting with a certain new promotion. I know nothing about. Um, somebody needs to tell me about Lucha Underground. Maybe we'll do that here in the second half. Uh, so uh, go check that out, and we'll be right back with Remember One. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at AwesomeCast.net. Ladies and gentlemen, this is M Dog 20, Matt Cross, international superstar, you name it, and I've been there twice. Ireland, England, Northern Ireland, Australia, Colombia, Egypt, France, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, Austria, are you kidding me? This guy's been all over the place, and if there's one thing I like, if there's a couple things that I like, it's chicken breast, it's the internet, and it's DNA wrestling. Thank you, everybody. You are checking out the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thanks. 
Hey guys, and again, please check out SorgatronMedia.com slash store and PodCampPittsburgh.com. Com. Guys, it is that time where we like to reach back into our remember box and remember when? We're going to make you remember when. We're going to make you see it again and again. We're going to take your memories and hide them in your box. If you don't have a box, we will pay for the surgery. <laughs> Hang it up there, our Patreon. Um, with that, remember <laughs> when? <laughs> remember when this week? Um, I was waiting for you to sing, look at this photograph. <laughs> we want you guys to remember epic hair in professional wrestling. I have one. Wait, 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 wait. Now, how did we get to this? I'm sitting there. We're at the Carlins. <laughs> you We're at the Carlins uh, for the uh, usual monthly pay-per-view party uh, for Hell in a Cell. And I'm having this discussion with uh, our friend of the mainstream media, Matt Carlins. And he tells us, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about, of course, Cesaro came out and he had a freshly buzzed head. It looks like he was waxed or something. It was pretty amazing. And we, we were just like, maybe Vince got to him and said, hey, you can't do that, you know, balding thing, you know, that's that's not that doesn't look good. Da, 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 da. And then like Triple H came out and we're like, or, or was doing a backstage segment. We're like, oh, Triple H. Yeah. You know, I like that he's cut his hair, not because he had to. Right. Mm. Not because <laughs> it was going away, just because. And, uh, and, and, you know, hearkening to a podcast, I listened to uh, his interview with, I want to say, JR, maybe, no, Jericho, probably, Jericho. Uh, where he said, I can't get it short enough, you know, uh, uh, now after I've been long for so many years. Um, so that got us thinking, like, who has epic hair in wrestling? LB, you have one. And I think I know what you're going to say. You probably don't. You son of a bitch. (laughs) No, you might. Um, The most epic hair I can think of in professional wrestling, uh, it was, uh, it's complicated. (laughs) Because the epic hair never started out as epic hair. It started out as normal hair. Kind of hair that was like uh, wet and down. But as the match progressed, it got <laughs> poofier and poofier oh. until it became a big blonde perm. <laughs> and the hair belonged to Mr. Perfect. <laughs> Go back and watch any match of his that lasted more than, I don't know, four or five minutes, and you will see a transformation. <laughs> SummerSlam 91 is the best example of this. With him him versus Bret Hart. Amazing. I got got super scared when Lunchbox went, well, it's complicated. (laughs) I thought he was going to follow it with, I thought he was going to follow it with, because it's not the hair on top of your head. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I know you too well. I'll go next. Listen, if I knew anybody in the WWE who had epic pubes, you know I would have went. <laughs> wow, but I don't. So I just... wow, is that Bobby? Is that... Bob, are you the one I heard? That was, that was wheels. That was oh, wheels. 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 Uh, wheels. Join us. Uh, uh, Hot Wheels RWA on the Twitters joins us right now. Uh, go check out rwa.live.com for what they got. Some cool stuff going on there. Uh, so, what's your epic hair of the week, sir? Hopefully I don't take anybody's because if I do, I'm going to hear those famous words. But I'm going to go with the missing link. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. So with that big old pump nice. in the front and balding. And then. Oh, the wait, front. no, wait, wait. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I'm going to go with the missing link. Awesome. Who's got next? I got, I'll go one. Okay. Bobby F. J. Town. All right, uh, this is one of the most embarrassing gimmicks in WWE, but how about the Red Rooster with the uh, rooster, <laughs> the rooster comb yeah. with the red hair? Oh, uh, that, was, that, that is epic hair. <laughs> Terry Taylor. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Eamon, and lethal. Eamon, do you have one? I do have one. I was worried that Bobby was going to take it because he references this person a lot. Um, but uh, I think the one that stood out to me when Sorg asked that question was uh, – Joshi, female wrestling legend, Bull Nakano. 
Nice. Oh, knocka, 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 no. That's what I meant. Uh, <laughs> Amy, you suck. Really? Okay, I didn't know I was she was Bart Simpson really before was... Bart Simpson. Really, it was. A gigantic, just like pointy air. Shocked. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Anyone who hasn't seen it, go check it out. It's, it's good stuff. Awesome. Awesome. So Riz needs a minute. I no no I actually had another I had a backup plan oh, for this one. Oh, I kind of I kind of figured Eamon would have stole mine. Uh, but the the this again uh, along with lunchbox is kind of weird because it's not his actual hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Oh, oh I think what's I know what's happening now. now. I think what's I know where you're going with this. Valvi. I don't think you will. Uh, but uh, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> Captain Lou Albano had, had a beat. He made the rubber band and an accessory to hairstyle, <laughs> and he put it to perfection. That's right. Mm-hmm. Captain Lou, do the Mario Albano. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> All right, Mad Mike, uh, uh, Mad Mike four eight eight three on the tweeters up in Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, what is your Poughkeepsie, Poughkeepsie New York? Poughkeepsie. What is your awesome it's thing? Or, yeah, what is your um, thing? What show is this? It's it's not it's not like massive hair like Ric Flair in the eighties or Michael Hayes now, but it, it's just one of my favorite hairstyles. I wish would come back. The Tyson Kid crown. Yes. Oh. The shaved, the shaved head, and all he had was a little flip right in front, so it made it look like he was a king. I, especially with this version of Tyson Kidd that we have now, I want to see his Beats by Dre and just a little crown of hair. That's what I need from Tyson <laughs> Kidd right now. And cat kick pads. And cat kick pads. Uh, <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, I think that's everybody, right? Uh, other than me? Well, except for you, Sorg. Uh, Sorg. Mine. Oh, thank you guys for not taking this. The most epic <laughs> pair has to go to one Andre the Giant. And I'm talking old nice. school <laughs> Andre the Giant. Look at that mane. <laughs> that is an amazing mane. I'm pretty sure the, the hair that Andre had in the 70s was actually pushed him over eight feet tall. Oh, certainly. <laughs> certainly. Yeah. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. It's not just because he's on my mind because I'm going to see the Princess Bride in a theater this weekend. And uh, Buddy Buddy Landell in the chat room says Jimmy Garvin, which mm. obviously, mm. obviously Jimmy Garvin. He was quite gorgeous. Oh, he was gorgeous, Jimmy Garvin, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. I have a mm-hmm. question. Yeah? Is this the first time that none of us have stolen someone else's? Yes. Good job, guys. Riz had one. Oh, Bonacano was stolen. Oh, Bonacano. Riz had a back. Riz had a back. By Eamon. By N.W. Eamon. But Riz had a back. I'm sorry. It's the closest we've got. It's the closest we've got. And Juggalo John in the chat room says, is no one going to say the Honky Donk Man? Oh! And and actually, I, I have to say, in... I saw Honky Tonk Man at New York Comic Con. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> um, well, I, di- I didn't talk to him. I, 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 know, I know better than that. But his hair was still exactly the same as the same. Also was uh, Jimmy Hart's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Guys, I believe that. I believe that. Guys, yeah. it's HTM if you're nasty. Oh, I, no. You know, it's even a great free surprise night, uh, but... Uh, has, I, I didn't know that. Is uh, Honky Tonk's man on the don't talk to list? I assume so. He's related anyone to that, Jerry Lawler. My, my thing is anyone that's done like more than like six shoot interviews needs to be on that list. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, and, okay. New Jack. And, uh, well, New Jack is on there because, I mean, why would you waste a conjugal visit? On he him? may kill you. <laughs> you think are kill you? He may kill you. Bobby. New Jack will stab you with like a makeshift knife. A uh, honky tonk man will stab you with his dick. <laughs> <laughs> True. These are the reputations <laughs> that these men have cultivated. Um, 
Sorg, I am surprised none of us said Luna Vashon. Oh, oh yeah. there you oh, go. Dude, um, so my sister dressed as Luna Vashon once for Halloween. Oh, years wow. ago, when she was like eight, we got her a blonde wig, and my mother shaved off half of it and drew the uh, the little blue lightning bolts or what the, the veins on it. Mm. It was fantastic. If I can find the picture, I will post it on the Facebook group because I'm sure I am a great brother. <laughs> Throwback I had, Thursday. I had so I had a weird attraction toward her back then. Whoa, that's a my sister. Wow. Yeah, how <laughs> dare you, Will? No. How no, dare no, 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 you? No, 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 no. Oh, this got weird. This got weird. That's a good time for an ad. Good time to go to an ad, guys. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com. There's some big news coming out there. Of course, you can start off by going to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. And go sign up for their newsletter. They're having uh, sales all the time for Barbershop Window uh, uh, happening. And <laughs> and uh, uh, we got some great stuff uh, designed by the great Alex Cars. And he's actually going to be working with us some new stuff over on Spreadshirt as well. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, we'll be... Uh, 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 putting those out on, on, on the tweets and everything the, as those come up. Race for me, but other big news, of course, uh, a lot of big people are coming pro wrestling tees. Of course, Jim Ross is there. Macho Man, Andre the Giant being represented on there, speaking of. But the big news this week, the Austin era of pro wrestling tees has begun under the label of Broken Skull Ranch. Uh, there's a new line of uh, 316 Stone Cold Steve Austin shirts. Obviously, these aren't going to be the same ones you get at WWE uh, shop.com uh, but there's going to be some new designs representing uh, some some cool cool stuff uh, for this era of Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, so go check that out and please start it off at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS throw one of our shirts in there while you're at it while you're picking up some cool stuff with big guys like like Steve Austin and all of them and also please support some of the, the, the smaller guys like especially guys we talk about over on Indie, Indie Mayhem show uh, support them They're, they don't have that big WWE contract hell some of them on TV TNA definitely don't have that big WWE content uh, contract. Uh, they're independent. They're 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 upstarts. They're entrepreneurs. Go support them. Uh, they appreciate it. Uh, help put, that is literally helping put food on some of their tables. So there you go. Uh, so prowrestlingtees.com slash WMS to get that started. Uh, we got some news. Well, first let's get into. We got everybody here. We started a conversation last night on the wrap up show. We're gonna see if we can. See what we can do with this. Uh, Hell in the Cell was this weekend. Everybody watched it because you paid your nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Um. So, what were your guys' thoughts? First of all, it. all around, how was the show? I liked it. Anyone was down with it. it? I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. I thought it was good. It was all right. There you go. I'm glad there's <laughs> such a variety of opinions. Right. It can, it can no, I'm, glad, I'm glad we all said it was all right because I would have had a problem like I had it with the Facebook, some some Facebook and social media outlets uh, saying it was a shit show. It was a sh- who? How would you think it's a shit show? It was because I mean, well, let's, well here it, it, if you read it on paper, it read. Uh, and it had Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. Uh, well, you're having a little bit of internet trouble, I think. <laughs> All right. If you had it on paper and the connection works, what does yeah, it say, I, Riz? It said Seth Rollins won mm-hmm. as well as John Cena. Mm-hmm. Put those two together and with Dean Ambrose being the one who Seth Rollins beat, you get a shit show. Doesn't have to matter who's on the other side. There's people who hate John Cena that much. That and there's works? people who like these people are irrational. The, the, like the, Dean Ambrose, all the, these people are just absolutely irrational at this point. I think that yeah. I think the people that have this stance on 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 pro wrestling versus the people like I, I guess like us, they're like. That was good wrestling. That was entertainment. I'm here yes. to be entertained, not to analyze the crap out of this thing. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's the same argument as Republicans and Democrats arguing. Like, you're not going to mm-hmm. go one way or another on that opinion. It's Xbox versus PlayStation fanboyism, just on, on a principle. Because that kind of watered down my excitement for that, for that pay-per-view. It did? A little Word. bit. 
the, the, the discussion are you, saying, the, you talking about the discussion or what actually what wait what's that uh, hold on hold on hey, Riz, are you talking about the discussion tainted yeah. your your thoughts on the pay-per-view this, or, the, this the fact that there's people who have to address it well i, I this, think i think it's one of those don't go to those dark places in the internet Riz. i i follow dark some places <laughs> Sork, that's every inch of the internet. <laughs> that's on our very own Facebook page. Oh, that's right. That that was that was me on the wrap up last night. A little bit. A little bit. I um, mean, no, but I I get enjoyment from analyzing stuff, and if I don't like what I see when I analyze things, yeah, I'm, not, not, going, I, I, I'm I not going to be as thoroughly enjoyed. I don't think we should go as far as don't analyze wrestling because, like, that you know. If you just sit there, we do. Yeah, we just stare at. If you just sit there and just take it and enjoy it, like I don't know. Um, About I guess to talk about like the main event, the the Hell in a Cell. Um, In the moment, in watching it live, I thought it was great. Um, Just the instancy of like being able to throw in chairs in the ring before the match started, (laughs) and that moment of him climbing the cell, you had that sense of like, oh shit, it's on. Um, And and. Looking back on it, though, I think they tried really, really hard, I think. Um, but it just comes to the fault of having a Hell in a Cell match in 2014 because there's there were – after Mick Foley takes a dive off the top of the cell, it's very hard to get a crowd to be like, holy shit, that was crazy. Like the dives they did through the table was like – it, it was ridiculous that they did that, and that is an insane spot, and it is. But the crowd gets so desensitized to seeing, you know, seeing Foley get thrown off that cell, to where it just looks like a spot, and they think it's cool, but it's not, you know, you know. I, I you're you're saying they can't they can't replicate that level of violence yeah. anymore, so it's hard to have a match like that. And, and I think the thing that the match showcased is that Dean and Seth are big wrestling fans. Because they were using a lot of the tropes from that Mick Foley Undertaker match, both the big fall off the cell and then the stretcher thing, like doing a different play on the whole, like being stretchered out, but then bringing him back in instead of mankind, like refusing to leave on the stretcher. Like, I think that's really cool. Um, But I don't think in in this modern audience that that works necessarily. Well, it's, it's kind of anticlimactic because when you hype up the match, by bringing out Mick Foley, mm-hmm. all you do is remind people of how bloody and brutal Hell in a Cell was. And Not to say, I mean, no, but I mean, when you bring out Mick Foley and says, your life will be changed because of Hell in a Cell. Like, Ambrose last night wasn't really selling injuries from Hell in a Cell. Only Rollins was. Yeah, no. Uh, besides Rollins, nobody was. Everybody limped to the ring and then gave up. Yeah, Ambrose came out limping, but yeah. I mean, Cena popped right up after his match anyway. Yeah, so. I mean, Cena didn't give a fuck. Um, here's the thing: I, I will give them credit. I think the Ambrose Rollins Hell in the Cell is the best Hell in the Cell we've had in years. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I think that is definitely the case. I just feel like we're never going to replicate like the ones from like. 98 to like 2000. Well, I would almost say that we should kind of get rid of Hell in a Cell until there's a, like there's a not not forever because you never say never you in wrestling. Still but, have you still have brutality without the bloodshed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. here's 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 the problem with hell in the cell i've always had is like well who's going to hell in the cell you're not having hell in the cell because that's where the feed the feud led to you're going to hell in the cell because it's like well somebody's gonna go in the cell how are we gonna do it this year how are we gonna make this plausible I, well at least at least ambrose versus rollins makes sense oh yeah yeah ambrose yeah. and rollins is the first one that has had a feud at hell in a cell that has made sense in years and it wasn't and they built the feud i think they had attacked and then the SummerSlam match was really good but it still left stuff to be you know desired not, not to be desired but to, you know in the feud necessarily so it, it they did try to build it and i and i appreciate that a lot um but yeah i i, I just think the modern era not because of bloodshed necessarily but because wrestling fans have seen it fucking all 
they really have seen it all, and that's just on WWE. And, and, and we and we can see it all again and again and again. Now it's a network, and and, and they're and, only nine ninety nine. Only nine ninety nine, and I think on top of that, if you're watching the network regularly, you relive the Hell in a Cell in one way or another since you know yeah. so that doesn't help like keeping that fresh in the mind um and i, I did like that it wasn't a full-on like they added two they they paid homage and they added two you know mm-hmm. um i think it was a cool different way to start it um the weapons you know involvement teasing the screwdriver well never seen that in wwe before i was so <laughs> i was really predicting like in the beginning when like ambrose was like throwing stuff into the ring he pulls out a bag and then like forgets it like I thought that was gonna be like thumbtacks. Mm-hmm. No, that was that was the first aid kit that he threw everything on the ground. Yeah, I was, I was like, <laughs> what is happening? Um, I, I I really thought it was gonna be thumbtacks, but you know. But, him pulling you know, out the duct tape was hysterical. He just looks at it like this could be fun and just throws it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, but generally, good show. Uh, otherwise, um, um, uh, yo, Eamon, you had, did, did you say you sp- I had a point. I had a point that I wanted to make. You did. You did. And I think because it was about was the women, right? Of this all across my Twitter line. Okay. Uh, during the pay per view. Not okay. from you guys, actually, but just in general. Okay. Um, we were busy putting Wrestle Buddies in boxes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> There was two uh, Divas matches on the show. There were, which is cool. Uh, uh, cool which to see. Which is to get more often. Good, good to see again. I, I think a strong storyline and and a, and title match. Yeah, um, yeah. Because concerning that um, <laughs> about I the wrestling, kind of, that, that, I feel like we've been kind of negative about the whole Brie Bella Nikki Bella story, just because of the whole. I mean, from the Jerry Springer segments and the acting and and all that stuff. Um, I can firmly say, and I want to know your guys' opinion, that the Bella Twins match at the pay-per-view was much better than the AJ Page match. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I would also like to think that Bree and Nikki have been working on that match for a very long time. I'm sure. I'm sure. Because that, that, that is the first time that they've ever had like a singles match against each other. And my thing, my kind of point of discussion of this is that I've heard, I've seen people basically predicting and assuming that the Age PJ match was going to be great and the Bellas match was going to suck without them ever even happening. Uh, because I think people get stuck in the idea of, well, Paige and AJ came from the Indies. And they are so much different than the Bella Twins. I think the Bella Twins do not get the credit that, that they deserve. I actually watched um, not too long ago. There's some clips online of like of a shoot interview they did when they first got released, and then like before they came back for their second run. If you remember that, um, they seem very intelligent about the wrestling business. Mm-hmm. Like they they don't just. I think people were caught up with the oh they're fucking John Cena and and fucking Daniel Bryan because they're super whores or whatever, and that's why they get their spots. No, I think they showcase that they work very hard, and the difference the. Re- the reason I think the match was better had nothing to do with the wrestling. It had to do with the fact that the crowd was actually into the Bellas match. Like, the crowd was receptive to it. They well, were, there's also a storyline. There's a storyline. And, and they're cheering, they were cheering Brie Bella, and they were behind Brie Bella, um, and they were you know, booing Nikki, and, and they were into the match. They were buying the near falls. Like, that's crazy. That, that I've never seen that in a lot of the, in the Divas matches this year. And they kicked out of each other's finishers. Yeah, like, and the crowd was into the kickouts. Like they were, they were believing it. Like they were, they were, you know, really into the match. And for the third or fourth month in the row, AJ and Paige have wrestled, and the crowd has been dead fucking silent. And it's just, they're waiting, they're waiting. that's interesting because I don't think they had a bad match per se. No, the place, the, the, they where they do. were on the card was tough for. You them. think that's what it I, is? I, I, I'm sorry. I'm kind of sick of that excuse. Not to be, I, I'm sick of that excuse. They were, you know, the, you know that that, that place on the card is to cool people down before the main event. But yeah. what, what did they were? What were they following? They were following, I believe, Big Show versus Rusev, which was a really good match, and it was a good probably match, but... the only other storyline that had more time invested into it is Ambrose and Rollins. I think, but I just think people really are pigeonholing and like they're in the death spot. Yeah, they followed Big Show Rusev. You know what the Bella Twins match followed? Cesaro Ziggler. Mm-hmm. And they were the second match on the card, which the second match is 
it, notoriously in wrestling, the second match on any card is a death spot. It is very much a death spot. Because you're following, you know, you're following traditionally a very hot opener. Yeah, but, they, but doesn't that call that if it's a hot opener, then the crowd's going to stay hot? Not mm-hmm. always. Because, well, the show just started. It's not like... You would, you would think that, but traditionally the second match is usually the death spot of, a, of any wrestling card. That's just how it traditionally goes. But they they were into it, and... Besides, I, I the way I also thought about it was Brie Brella has been kind of – people say, oh, well, she's leeching off Daniel Bryan's heat because, of uh, you know, she's doing the yes chant now or whatever. But they were never really cheering for Daniel Bryan. You know, they weren't cheering for, you know, her husband, which you, can, which you can't say for other divas, AJ Lee. Like, <laughs> that's – I don't know. I, I feel like – and people got so pit, so – adamant that the AJ Page match was better even though the crowd was dead silent during it to the point I think they tried to start a like there was tried to like there was a thing for like a real women's wrestling hashtag on Twitter because of it because of the Bella Twins match and it's like come on guys they're working hard in there Mm -hmm. and I'm sure nobody I'm sure nobody forced Brie Bella to do a fucking dive to the outside of the ring like I'm sure you know it's they're, they're they understand what makes wrestling successful and i'm sorry if the crowd is into it or if they're not into it that would that's what makes a wrestling match a good match mm-hmm. if you if you took nikki and brie bella from this exact time last year and put them in a one-on-one match against each other it would not be nearly as good mm-hmm. as this one at hell in the cell was because they've both secretly improved a hell of a lot Oh, absolutely. There, I mean, there are still obviously some issues, but there are issues with everyone there. Mm-hmm. Like, like Bree doesn't need to scream incessantly that she's drunk or wants to be <laughs> or something. Like, sure. she, drunk and horny. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> is that their new tag name? Name drunk and horny. Mm. But, but like, I just, I'm just, I was watching the Age Page a match, and like, Page took like a back bump on the guardrail, and like, nobody cared. <laughs> And was, you know, you know it doesn't help. You know it doesn't help the AJ and Page feud. Their names sound so similar. We say Age and Page all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, you completely did. Every did. single time, yeah, okay. I said it. I, at thought, least. I thought my head was going to explode. I, ha- I, I'm sorry, Amy. Because Amy just, just said that time. now, and I did I say that? I, I subconsciously. Yeah, you yeah. completely did. Age and Page. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That should be the, that should be a show title, Age and Page. Right? But I, I think I think Mike, the point that you were making, like how it, it, it has a lot to do with story, because the Bellas at least have had a consistent story. AJ and Page have been in this cycling period constantly, where they're constantly doing the same payoff. And it's, it's just, weird. It's weird. If you watch just WWE programming, the Bellas have had a very consistent storyline. If you watch Total Divas, Bree is the heel and Nikki is the face somehow. Mm-hmm. Which is amazing to me. And I know that's not supposed to be like kayfabe or canon or anything like that, but it, that the Total Divas storyline almost makes more sense for the feud for me than the, than the WWE programming does. <laughs> so, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad so thing, but that, it's a thing I noticed. That goes to like a rumor that was going around. I think we, uh, we discussed it and some of us were like, I, I think shaking our heads at it whenever we did. I can't remember where we did. About the idea that uh, uh, you know, there's a reason. To- like, uh, obviously, this is kind of disqualified now, but none of the none of the total divas were allowed to have the belt because of storyline confusion. Yeah. Um, which you can say whatever you want about total divas, whether it's really real or just another story wrestling storyline. It's confusing. I'll it, give it, you that. It, it, so it, it is like, how do you feel that comes off? And now we will have the champion involved uh, in the next. Uh, well, I, I know that. You, well. AJ Lee is still not on the show. Oh, AJ's not, but Paige is. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, but Paige, remember, the last time she held that belt, it was not for long. Yeah, true, I true. wouldn't be surprised if we never see Paige with that title on Total Divas next season. Because the only time they showed her was when Natty was fighting her once, and Paige kicked her ass pretty handily. Yeah. it's And, and I believe Stephanie McMahon came out in an interview recently. It was like, like that and address that rumor and it was like no that's not the case um but if even if that is like i 
Now I don't see that being the case because who are the people that can be Divas Champion? Like AJ and like Emma. Mm -hmm. And Layla. And Layla. Like I really Fox. I really hope that's not the no, case. Well, no, Alicia Fox will be on the show. Chris. No, Alicia oh, Fox no, Alicia Fox and uh Paige are gonna be on the but like I really hope that's not the case because it seems like the storyline right now is Nikki forces Bree to help her win the Divas Championship. Mm-hmm. From AJ, and then you have a Bella vs. Bella match for the Diva style of TLC. That's kind of where I see this should probably go, and I really like that. Yeah, With I don't think, I don't think they're gonna. Yeah, the give, the Be- give the Bellas the chair match. <laughs> I don't know why, but I feel like that would be fun to watch. I feel like. I wouldn't mind them doing like total. I I don't know why, but I feel like now I wouldn't mind them doing total divas stuff like as in the divas championship scenario, because at least the divas, at least the total divas feuds, no matter how like really like kind of stupid they are, at least they're for reasons. Mm-hmm. Like like Natty's jealous because they're being mean to her husband or whatever. Like that's at least an actual story as opposed to women are crazy, which is the yeah. only storyline that's been happening in the Divas Division for a year. Bitches has be been crazy, crazy yo. Natty, but bitches do be crazy. Yeah. Natty is <laughs> are we just kind of confirming it? You know what? You know what storyline I want to see on on Total Divas? What's that, Bobby? W- women be shopping. <laughs> women be shopping. Um, I don't know. I think we've had some of the women Bobby, be shopping storylines. Every storyline yeah, Total yeah. Divas. Let's go yeah. shopping. Whether they're shopping for houses or Daniel Bryan is <laughs> dresses. <laughs> Daniel <laughs> Bryan Range Rover. Rover. Yeah, we have had women be shopping. <laughs> women be shopping. <laughs> spent thirty bucks on coffee and Daniel's yeah. pissed about it. Like uh, Total <laughs> Divas and shopping equals uh, Legends House and cooking things I, I want, I want nikki, like after this whole bella feud i want nikki to change her gimmick completely to just be nikki bella super real estate agent but yeah. she's really really bad at it yeah but riz riz legends be cooking legends be cooking <laughs> Oh, oh, amazing. All nice. right. All right. So the, I think we've pretty much exhausted our thoughts on Hell and Cell. Some other news items happened this week. I, I, I definitely want to get your opinion on some of this stuff. Randy Orton's going to have another movie, guys. Is he, he going to go to the papers? And it's going to be the papers. And it's going to be The Condemned 2, another sequel. He's really good at these guys. Um, so. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh I, I, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Who's holding her hand up? Who, who's that? Hey, way in the back, way in the back. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby with the GTA 5 sign that he stole from a GameStop and a young child. Um, <laughs> I did not steal from a GameStop. All right. Randy Orton. Yes. I just have to say. Oh, my God. I know where this is going. I've given him so much shit over the years. You are the 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 utmost Randy Orton hater over I, the years, you got up and walked away from the table at Buffalo Wild Wings yes. when he won Money in the Bank the one year. <laughs> I, I will say this. I am so excited for this character of Randy Orton right now. He showed personality last night. Mm-hmm. I am excited for Randy Orton. He's just got to be really angry all the time. I yeah. I want to see The Condemned 2 because Randy Orton's in it now. <laughs> somebody, somebody clip this out. Somebody clip this this part yeah, out. Yeah, it'll of probably show. be it'll probably be like year like and couple. Play it and play it when the movie comes out and see if he still feels that way. Probably play it two weeks, Riz. We need an official <laughs> Mayhem Show archivist that can do all that kind of stuff. I can't. I can't, this. I can't remember if we talked about it on the show, but like obviously it's not happening now. But I like how cool would it uh, would have Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton have been? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't believe that they would do it. I yeah. mean, they won't do it, but yeah. right now, never though, that he's he's kind of like a face now, mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah. Wait, wait, are you are you pulling a lunchbox? <gasps> I oh, oh my oh, god! Oh, 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 are you just gonna start randomly going like this? Randy Orton is my John Cena, guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's my spirit wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby hears oh, voices in his I head. I hear voices in my head, and they it's, they're telling me to like Randy Orton. <laughs> this entire time. Wow. Well, I mean, he's kind of had a twofer, because first he had the Vine craze last, last week. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of the Vine craze, I posted in the chat room a video of Randy Orton RKOing himself. Oh, I gotta watch <laughs> <laughs> And then the internet exploded. 
that's amazing. No, I, I, we all we were all watching as usual in the hangout. Uh, those of us doing that. Um, and he came out and he was he was irate and he took out Seth Rollins and uh, and 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 second to that amazing display that made us like Randy Orton all of a sudden was um, disappointed Triple H standing in the ring. Yeah, <laughs> that was, I was a, like, that was, I hate it when the kids fight. That was a really good segment. That was live. awesome. That was a great start off for Raw. It's like great. It's like oh, we we won. Da 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 da. We and, we address and, both the things. I and all those I noticed. Um, Eamon, while you you didn't like the flipping of the of the cages, and actually, I think I think it makes more sense to put the main the the Rollins thing first because mm-hmm. that was the main event. That's the first thing you're tuning in to check out, and then you can go from there. But again, I feel both. Oh, yeah, are, yeah that, that's true. But but, yeah. but but still, the the Rollins thing was the first thing to start off. The first thing that we updated you on, right? Uh-huh. Uh, not who's going to face Brock Lesnar just yet, uh, but well, they don't want to call attention to the fact that it's not going to happen anytime soon. That that's true too. That's true too. Uh, but either way, um, don't know where I was going from that. I had a point. I had a yeah. point that I completely escaped. But the Randy, Randy Orton, Orton thing. Oh, Randy Orton. I wanted to talk about Bray Wyatt. <laughs> okay. Can we talk about Barry Wyatt? Can we talk about the again? We had a very theatric ending to Hell in a Cell. This is a perfect place for them to do this kind of thing. What um, did you guys see in the hologram? I thought it was a. I thought it was Sister Abigail. Yeah, that's what I thought. I it have was. to look back I, at it, but I thought it was R two. R wars. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> I thought <laughs> at first I thought it was Tupac, <laughs> but. It was, it was it was hologram dancing our truth. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, okay, it let's lay this out because some of you, if you didn't watch it live, you did not get this experience, and I don't think you can repeat this experience because <laughs> this happens. It went dark. We got the speaking in tongues. We got the smoke coming out of the center of the ring with the lantern. A Wyatt coming out of the smoke, ending the show, and we're like, "What in the world just happened here?" Right? Like this was creepy. Holy cow! We got a blank for. What five seconds? Yeah, and then oh, I, don't know, so that. I, I thought the dancing our truth coming across your that. screen, station that identification was, with that smile. That was the best thing that they could have put in that spot. He was so happy. Oh, is that R-Truth. what you guys are talking about? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. because uh, when my friend's house that we were at, uh, she had bought the pay per view. Because oh. 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 Okay, because you guys kept saying our truth. I'm like. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, this is a, like, this is what we get for our nine ninety nine. And Dad can, watched the pay per view with me. Yeah, that happened, and he looked at me like, "What the <laughs> hell was that?" <laughs> I was laughing because so, I was like, "That was amazing." It was so like they, it was like you guys something to let you know that this is not a feed cutout. Yeah. This is planned. This is still live and part of the show. Okay. Because yeah. we all thought the feed just died. <laughs> <laughs> we all thought, like, oh, good, like, they're getting ready for the uh, match. What the fuck just it, happened to the yeah. entire feed? And this is why, Someone, I, I, and, and, and I guess... Why the, go ahead. Okay. That's why the memes that are out there now are amazing. <laughs> uh, if you if you look up our truth endings, uh, Sorg, I'm not gonna say the one I showed you because that was wrong. Uh, <laughs> but 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 in spirit, it was the but, right thing. Yeah, it was the right thing. But uh, another video they showed was the, was the ending of The Sopranos. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> oh, that's great. And then it just showed our truth dancing. Like it, this this is a new meme now that WWE is going to probably uh, milk for all it's worth. Yep. Huh. After every Raw, our truth's gonna dance across the screen. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. I was like, really, Cena won again. Da, da, da. That's why I said I stated Saturday night. DJ Lunchbox, hold on. We're looking at you. We're looking at you. Oh, DJ Lunchbox, happening? I want you in this studio in front of my green screen <laughs> and doing that dance so we can put it at the beginning, end, and middle of this show. I can put, yeah, there you go. Like that. Like that. It's going to be. <laughs> It'll be the star wipe. It's gonna be the star wipe of this oh, show. The I'm, gonna make, wipe. I'm gonna the make a wipe. Apple motion transition to put it in Final Cut just to use in this show. Hell, oh, I may God. use it in other shows. I don't even care. Um, 
<laughs> but we need your theme music, so um, we need, we'll uh, just steal our truth. I don't know. Riot. There you go. I know it's not a video podcast, but <laughs> yeah. you know, I want what somehow, I want. Somehow it needs to be used. what I want. Like, hey, right you know, after the Petri wine ads just say, <laughs> you know, hey, hey guys, hey guys, I worked on a project several years ago that was supposed oh. to be. You ever see the bad videos where or the bad websites where there's a person that pops up in the corner and they start talking to you? It's video yeah. pretty much. It, it's like a flash thing, like a really horrible idea, right? I was working on that by request, oh, no. oh. <laughs> and I can completely <laughs> set up panelriot.com. Okay, may not because it's a Tumblr, may wrestling mayhemshow.com. That you go to wrestling mayhemshow.com if you have flash enabled, and you'll get a little dancing lunchbox in the corner. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> I, I have the ability to do this, and I choose. To use that for good and not for evil. Sword, you <laughs> that's, sword. that's why sword. I have trouble paying the bills. <laughs> sword, you just need to create a Mayhem Show Geosites page where it's nothing but dancing LBs all the way down. <laughs> dancing LB we, need to create, we need to create a Microsoft Assistant original lunchbox to dance across. <laughs> you look like you're trying to watch a John Cena match. Do you need help with that? <laughs> you look like you're typing a letter to your friend. Do you need help with that? Anyways, I'm sorry. We're doing the dance when we do that. If you don't know, look up our truth dance. I, 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 what I I didn't get it right away. I, like I put like our truth dancing endings. What what's what's the the search for it's, this one? It's our truth endings. Yeah. Hashtag our like, truth endings. Oh, hashtag our truth endings. Oh, oh I can't wait to see this. Oh no! Like like I, half I, of them. Title sword. Half of them are like like announcements that somebody has died. Hold on. Tribute show. Special trip. Oh, this is the yeah, one. This is, no. this is the. Oh, no. This is the. By the way, no. sorry, we did a Chris Benoit no. tribute show, um, and it oh. ends did with. Did you see the? Did you see the meme where Chris Benoit's face was posted in the wild? Yeah, yeah. 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 It, which is which is sad because we watched it and we were like, you know, that somebody's gonna put Chris Benoit and Zord on. Like we named all these memes. Benoit. <laughs> Zordon and 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 I just want to know when we're going to get the Wyatt's Lantern viewfinder on shop. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> whatever, whatever you want to think about that angle and where it's going and 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 if it was if it ruined the match or not, that was fucking impressive. Yeah, yeah. it's that gonna be. And that was technically very impressive that they could do that and not fuck it up. And that feud. Have one, we were in one day of a feud that's gonna go. That feud for a long time. Amazing. I I haven't been that impressed with like a quick in ring graphic like that since the rising of the Undertaker from the casket, like where he <laughs> rose up into the Titan Tron. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, and I know that was just like completely someone yeah. else, but still, god damn it, that brought me right <laughs> back to that. Okay, Fab. I was gonna say somewhere Undertaker was backstage going, I did that first. <laughs> hey still works still works right <laughs> certainly oh man guys it's been fun we got to get out of here i'm sorry uh so much i really wanted to get to but that's all we can fit in uh so real quick let me know that's what, what did you said. Uh, <laughs> what did you learn from wrestling this week wheels <laughs> that's what I you get that i'm going to spend another year or two to buy another vi wrestling video game I'm not going to buy it each year until I find out that it's not going to be a copy of last year's. Mm -hmm. Just with a new label. <laughs> certainly. Okay. certainly. Mad Mike, what did you learn? God damn it. Why would you jump to me? Because um, you're you. I, I learned that um, the Natty and Tyson Divorce Tour 2014 is going strong. Um, the end of Total Divas until uh, it's just so good it's so much fun to watch them implode especially when they're both hammered and they take pot shots at each other it reminds me of just like probably what real life was like for macho man and liz like it was oh. no i'm serious like i feel like it it's just really really fucked up but it's hilarious. To that Tyson kid telling Natty, you remind me, you remind me of your dad is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Oh, no, wow. no, I'm sorry, Eamon. Eamon, when, uh, when Tyson greeted her in the episode before this and said, what's up, brother? Yeah. I, mean, I lost my shit. <laughs> I lost my fucking mind. 
Tyson gets his biggest shit head out of it. I do. I I do. I do sometimes call my wife dude sometimes. <laughs> okay, but that's different. That's like, different. Just just don't call her Jack. I mean, like in conversation, <laughs> like 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 like, hey, we gotta take, we gotta do the thing, dude. And, I, I, I'm sure but, it did, but, but I'm also, it but I also call like you the dog it, and the cat, dude. Yeah, you do it in a very cool, in like a cute way, like a cutesy way. Tyson Kid does it in a. Wait, I'm wait, wait, all of wait. our goddamn cats to myself. And, and plus, <laughs> plus you're way? not related to dude. If you call someone brother. You're either in the business or you have an actual brother. Like that's how he referred to his wife. Okay. Yeah. We called her dude. Dude. Hey dude. Hey dude. Hey dude. What's up, bro? Hey man, yeah, what'd you learn from bro. wrestling this week? I learned from wrestling this week, guys. And we live in a very, very messed up world. Okay? <laughs> Let's be honest. Okay. Who the fuck? Who in the fuck? Puts four blueberries in a smoothie. <laughs> wow. Wait, wait, wow. Wait, wait, what? Four. Wow. Four. What's the point of putting in four? Do you think it's going to have some effect on the taste oh and the quality god. of the smoothie? No. <laughs> uh, oh my see. god. Thank you. Thank you. I am so uh, glad that Hipster <laughs> Amen showed up this evening. Thank you so much. We spent this whole podcast putting you over. And then you make a stupid comment. Oh, did you put four blueberries in my smoothie? Why did you have to put? You wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to tell. <laughs> Why are you so angry about blueberries, sir? Wait, four, uh, four blueberries. What does that have to do with wrestling? I'm Why? Yeah, it was right. on Raw. Nikki on Bella Raw said that if you put four oh. blueberries in a smoothie with three bananas, and five strawberries, that it's gonna have some <laughs> sort of effect. I like how you memorized all the numbers for the fruit. He did. It was. It was. Yeah. Wow. Oh wow, that, that was good. That's amazing. I was just impressed that Mike did not spew his drink out when wow. Damon went off. I wow. I didn't even know how to respond to that. That was amazing. Aim, uh, uh, I don't even know. Mag, you went right, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Although now I learned Eamon has really strong opinions about I think, I think, I think, I think Eamon <laughs> may have some issues with his local barista. Um, Eamon, Eamon has smoothie rage. I mean, yeah, whenever Eamon goes to his uh, school Starbucks, they just put the dick that complains about blueberries. Now. Like, I know, like, I, I heard that, like, San Antonio is one of those uppity towns, but I had no idea what's done to you. <laughs> wow. Wow. You've um, changed, man. By the way, I'm learning so much about, I got to say, wait, this one on one, me and Eamon here. I, I, I got to say, I'm learning so much about Austin, Texas from The Daily Show right now. <laughs> it is so educational. Um, how many guns do you have in your car? Eight. Yeah, well, me, that was a question. That was a yeah. question. We should, <laughs> hey, we I should all guess. When you go, are they teach, wait? Are they teaching you when English? You go, when you go home this go summer, home. when you go home in the in the in the off college time, I hope in, somebody in, I hope somebody looks at you and goes. We don't complain about our smoothies here in corporate. They know put more than four. Blueberries. <laughs> oh wow! Blueberries. I love. By the way, your your I I I tweeted your your quote about the four blueberries, and it's already getting retweeted by random people. <laughs> it got retweeted when I said it. It got retweeted when I said it. Educate the nation about them smoothie blueberries. That's amazing. LB, please, wow. please. Um, LB, 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 please, please tell us. <laughs> I like how you got LB to calm things down. Follow that, LB. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> go to our Facebook page. Go to the, the Mayhem Show Facebook page and watch the slow motion video I posted of uh, a crazy thing that happened during the Dolph Ziggler um, Cesaro match. What? That's mm-hmm. what I learned. I learned that uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler can do anything from any angle. Damn. Oh, no, oh, I, didn't oh I know what you're talking about. Where now. is this? Yeah. Hold on, I have to go yeah. through all the Chris Benoit uh, smoke pictures, <laughs> apparently. It should be right at the top. I just posted it. You ju- oh, I need to refresh the page. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Now, this was. No, I got Matt Carlin's. Oh, there it is. Okay. Right. There it is. So, 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 should I, should I really explain this? So, they're, they're kicking each other. 
He kicks. Did you push on me? He misses Cesaro. Like it's what? What is happening? This should been slow Wait till wait till he starts to wait till he picks him up. He, this oh, is, oh, this is absolutely oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I, okay, so he's spinning him around again. It's slow motion. This is the part where okay, Cesaro does like kind of an uppercut thing. They're turning around back to back. They're coming back around, and this is the part. I think I know where this is going. Dolph Ziggler jumps up in the air, gets. gets see, see, that's wow. where it gets complicated because he kind of picks him up sideways. You pick like him would, up. It's like you would catch. He's like, flipping. Like, Drops it's, into a backbreaker. Oh my god, he's dead. Oh, yeah. Is this is this the point? Because I know you were flipping out about the time where he got punched in midair and reacted dead. That was amazing. <laughs> that was, that was, that was, that was amazing. Was All hail Dolph Ziggler. That's uh, what I like. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Dolph, uh, if WWE uh, ever makes a goat simulator game, it's going to be the Ziggler simulator. Oh yes, because he's the only person that can like ragdoll Dolph, Dolph Ziggler. Ragdoll Dolph Ziggler. Um, ragdoll. Ragdoll. Oh, I love that. Uh, Riz, what's your awesome? Or what? What show is this? What's your awesome thing? Of the week? <laughs> what's your awesome? Thing? What did you learn about awesome awesomeness? Thing of the week? And, and while you're at it, what did you achieve? Well, well and awesome. what did you watch sword. this week, Riz? Did you I'm watch sword. a movie? I achieved in video games. Uh, I know what I learned in wrestling is uh, Sheamus is a big. What, well, I'm sorry. Dare... What? Say it again. You glitched he, out. Sheamus oh. is a bigot. Sheamus, <laughs> is a big fat jerk face. Whoa! Wow. But at least he was funny about it this time. No, no, no. He had a <laughs> touching moment between two grown men, two best friends, and not only do you interrupt that. You kick a poor defenseless cameraman in the face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, that's well, why you needed this, your friend. Mm-hmm. Go out, explain to him why I, that is wrong. Listen, say that right now. As soon as I had hey. that, I did tweet that uh, the Mayhem Show does not condone violence towards <laughs> cameramen. That's true. That's but this uh-huh. condone what Seamus did. That's what I want to know. It's probably no. No, I don't. I don't. I'm not happy with it. Okay. Not happy with it. Not crazy about it. Nope. 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 That's a lot of money, Sorg. Sorg, what if Seamus would have reimbursed the cameraman for his face? <laughs> yeah, for the, for, any, for the cameraman. For any, and the, face. For the cameraman. I mean, for, the cameraman for, didn't didn't doesn't own the camera in which the the, the versus I'll an independent for contractor. Re- surgery, fella. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's okay, actually well, insurance in the WWE this, versus this indie wrestling. They're filming, like doing a segment for Sheamus, and he gets kicked in the face. That's part of being a cameraman. I thought I thought you were going to talk about Sheamus doing an awful YMCA. No, no, that was that was brilliant though. That was a the terrible. Best, the I best part, it. the best part of that though, was uh, the camera or the the referee checking on Sandow instead. Yes. Of- Yes, I needed to bring that up. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby, yeah. for yeah. finishing wow. my awesome. finishing was in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> On that <laughs> note, I learned. Uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't Sorry, learn. Bobby, 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 Bobby what you achieve this Sorry, week, Bobby? I, I learned that. Randy, I, I learned that Randy Orton is my spirit animal, or I mean, spirit wrestler, for the next two weeks. <laughs> right. He is well, an animal. He's also a viper. He is a so viper. He can, yeah, he, he is a spirit a animal. Spirit. He's, he's a reptile. He's, he's he can transform into a snake. Oh uh, my God! Is Randy Morton is Randy Orton an animor- anamorph? Yes, he is. Anamorph. Okay. Wow. Sorg, what'd you learn? I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. Um, also, don't answer Lanny Poffo in any of the questions. Oh, never answer oh, Lanny Poffo. Lanny Poffo was never a good answer for anything in life. No, it wasn't. Mm. It wasn't at all. I gave Riz that guess back. Mm. Um. <laughs> I learned that you never leave your wrestling toys out. Oh, no. yes. Uh oh. And walk away. Uh, bad things happen. Sword. Bad things. Sword. Do things happen. Oh, wait. wait, well, wait. We, were, we were half awake by then. There so it, it was. Wait, which way? This way. There you go. All right. Yeah. No, no, no. Close enough. No, it doesn't matter on audio. I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, that was weird. We just made our fingers. Kaboop. 
Yeah. Um, anyways, guys, please let us know what you thought about your thing in wrestling, your favorite thing in wrestling this week, uh, about your your favorite uh, uh, heads of hair from Remember When or at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please let us, drop us a line at that email address. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Um, we can also drop us a line at 412206WMS0. Go check out uh, LB over at PanelRiot.com. He's doing great things, no matter what he says about his own performance. Um, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I say Can I say something about my uh, No. Are you alive? No, it's good. Something? It's something good. Are you, are, what's going on, LB? Um, what's going on, buddy? We, uh, it was, uh, we missed last week, but we're back this week with uh, with episode 12. We're talking about the uh, all the huge announcements from the, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe for the next five years and uh uh head over to panelriot.com right now to see the age of ultron sneak peek that just premiered on abc you can find it at panelriot.com uh go look now and if you're a live listener that still applies it's 11 p.m uh Mm -hmm. on tuesday night go and check it out i am posting it as we speak it was a great sneak peek they try to lift the hammer oh Dude, it was funny as hell, though. <laughs> nice. nice. So go check Spoilers. that out on Panoriot.com. Um, so with that, uh, also please uh, subscribe to us over on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. Um, you can also uh, please check out our, our friend Basic Sickness at BasicSickness.com. Um, and you can check us out here live every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com starting at 9 p.m. Eastern time after it. Tonight, we're going to be talking at 11 o'clock-ish uh, Eastern time with uh, Aiden Vale, uh, somebody that we've uh, talked about on the show. Yeah, Yes, he's the other pocket rocket. And yeah. we'll probably talk to him about that <laughs> as well. Yes. <laughs> It's the other one. Big thanks to Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters for helping with notes and tweets all night long. Please check out, of course, if you want to support the show, pro wrestling, pro wrestling tees.com slash WMS, patreon.com slash wrestling ma'am show, and let us friends at slice on broadway.com know that you heard about them from us at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. So until next time, thank you for everybody who uh hopped in tonight at Amen 2, please. At DJ Lunchbox at the E Riz at Mad Mike 4883 at Hot Wheels RWA at Bobby FJ Time at J Time. J Time. Bobby FJ Town and I'm at Sorgatron Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.